I hope all of you got the details. If you have not, you can get one and make sure that you put your name on it. And all the notes are in your folder so for every day, for all the three days. So make sure that you keep it and protect it and you don't lose it. Okay? Thank you so much. Good evening to everyone here. Can you all hear me? Okay, and uh, I always like to, because there are many, many places I go to and Celeste and I go, but this is the only body of believers, and I can say specifically Achan and his dear wife. I have known them longer than I've known Celeste, my wife. And this is the only place I can say that, not too many places, so it's a, it's a real blessing. So we go back several years. Um, and our fellowship has been sweet over the years, and it's a delight for me to be with Celeste. Not often that I get, we get to go away for a romantic weekend. <laughs> yes, we don't very rarely. But when I say that, I mean this. Are we back? So going back to where I was, um, Celeste and I have uh, had wonderful times of sharing God's Word together in a few occasions where um, we try to pool our resources to do things in a way uh, that brings a little bit of uh, areas of some of our backgrounds to bear in terms of sharing what God has taught us and also explain certain elements of God's Word. Now, notice the word retreat I have circled, right? Now, till we, till we leave this place, we are going to be interacting. I'm not going to be lecturing to you. Agree? No? Yes? Yeah, that's the type of interaction we're going to have. It's not going to be one way, and we're going to show you a few interesting words we're going to be dealing with. But the important thing is, I want you to focus on this word, retreat. And I'm going to have you participate with me, okay? It's going to be a time where we relax, reflect, re-energize, right? Isn't that what we do at a retreat? So this is going to be a time of relaxing. If you look at your notes, it's all blank. So you can go to sleep if you want to. <laughs> Holy snow if you want to. I, and I really mean that. It's not going to be a heavy session where you've got to feverishly take notes and concentrate on complicated things. Not really. What I request us do is either on your smartphone or if you have your Bible, Follow the text of scripture. That's all. Okay? We're just going to be reading scripture and making observations. Do you, do you everyone get that? Everyone got that? I want us, if I may use that word, fall in love with God's word again this weekend. 
and I'm going to stop frequently and make us think of what was said, okay? So at the retreat, we are going to relax, reflect. What does that mean? What does that mean, reflect? I know if you stand in front of the mirror, your image is reflected, correct. What does it mean to reflect in a context where we come together as a church family? Think over. What did we do last time we were here? How has the Lord dealt with me as an individual? How have I grown in my relationship with my spouse, with my husband, with my wife, with my children? Every year, we want to reflect on God's goodness, God's greatness, but on our growth as well, right? Since the last retreat, how have you grown in the Lord? Has your knowledge of scripture increased? Those are very simple questions, but solemn questions, right? Okay. Those of you who went with me through those 16 weeks of study we did on the 66 books of the Bible, I came up with this acronym, right? B-I-B-L-E. Someone read this for me. I didn't hear you. Breath induced luminously expressed. This is this is my God breath, God inspired, okay? So when you wake up in the morning, when we take a deep breath, perhaps the first thing we need to remind ourselves is, wow, that's the type of breath. God used to make his word alive. You all know that when someone stops breathing, that person is probably sooner or later not going to live. So the Bible, the word, then becomes very important to a believer. Now this is the this is the topic. If you look at your handout for today, this is the this is, this is all I'm going to be doing this evening, and then Celeste is going to take on a little practical way of conversation when she comes up in a few minutes here. Okay, truth talks. That's my topic, and the subtopic is conversations of Jesus Christ in the Gospel of John and their relevance, that's the relevance of their conversations today, okay? We're not getting into a big theological discussions of these conversations. What we're going to do is look at a few conversations and then discuss a few details from those conversations and see how they can be applied to us today. But first, let's define some terms. That means, what does David mean by this? Truth talks. All right. Truth talks, two words, right? If I look at truth in terms of a noun, it means Jesus is talking, right? John 14, remember the Lord Jesus said, I am the... Right. He doesn't lead to the way, he is the way. He doesn't speak the truth, he is the truth. That's significant. All right. Now, as an adjective, which means a word that describes another word. If I look at you and I would say, my brother here is seated. He is using a sitting posture. As opposed to me, he is using a standing or erect posture. So we define a physical quality. All right. As an adjective, truth defines or explains the type of talks. Okay? All right, let's move on to the next part. Conversations, right? Am I having a conversation with you now? 
Now, did you all know what that meant? I didn't say a word, but that was a non-verbal expression of which we have so much. All right, here's an interesting thought. A conversation is a vocal competition in which the one who is catching his or her breath is called the listener. Got it? That means between two people, it is said that I cannot even get a word edgewise. You talk, 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 I get tired. Listen, 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 I don't get a word. That's really not a conversation, is it? Okay, here's another interesting uh, statement. The real art of conversation is not only to say the right thing, but also to leave unsaid the wrong thing in the tempting moment. Have we all been there? Talk to Celeste in my absence and she will tell you. So not saying something is also in, as important, if not more important, than saying the right thing. I think we can nod ahead to that experience, isn't it? Part of the conversation. All right. Types of conversations with words, Without words, some of the acts, some of the, uh, the the signs and symbols we use. Stone pots at the Cana wedding. Do you remember? John, we're going to be looking at that in a little detail tomorrow. They did nothing, but they said something in the context of the conversation Jesus had with his mother. Jacob's well, where does this come? Who was sitting at Jacob's well? Answer me, at least you're not going to bed tonight if you don't talk to me. Jesus. Yes, Jesus sat around that well. We're going to be looking at that tomorrow. John chapter 4. And he used that as the subject in which he started his conversation. Fascinating, isn't it? Fish and bread on a charcoal fire. Wait. Yes, John 21. Jesus had breakfast ready. Isn't it fascinating? Think about it. No toaster, but a charcoal fire. The Creator God in perfect man. And that too, when we get to it, it's excites when you read the narrative. He uses some fish which the, the boys brought. Fish cooks very quickly. So he had the bread already ready. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? This is the fish he added up. Okay. Anyone knows this, has seen familiar on your phone? When, we, when you read an article on some, some websites, at the bottom, you have people interacting. And very rarely I interact because almost always the language is intolerable. All right, more of that later. But notice the word conversation. This never used to be there in the past. It used to have a different name, but now it's conversation. The number of people. The identity kept anonymous. Very rare today online you actually see your full name. And then of course someone is interacting with the content of the conversation. All right, let's go back. There's one more. There's a couple of things for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ of the Gospels. Here are the key characteristics. This one slide that I'm going to show you 
encapsulates the four Gospels. Okay? The Gospels present the words, works, and worth of the Lord Jesus Christ. What he spoke, what he did, sorry, and who he is. That's, those are the 89 chapters of the four Gospels. Look at the four, three W words. His, can you repeat that with me? His words, his words, and his words. Everything to do about the Lord Jesus Christ. But specifically, we're going to draw a few lessons from John's Gospels. I think most of you know by now, and every time I say this, is one of my favorite genres. For many years, I've read the Gospels once a month. That's about nine chapters, uh, three chapters, nine chapters every day. You can read the New Testament. Three chapters, you can read all the four Gospels in one month. And some of you have that little bookmark I gave you on the Gospels. All right. The more you study a subject, the more intimate knowledge you gain of that subject. Think about this for a few seconds. The more you study a subject, the more intimate knowledge you gain of that subject. Agree with me? Right? The more time we spend, but we can never ever have perfect knowledge. That's for another time to discuss in terms of uh, knowledge and so forth. I love this quote, I just threw it in here because this is the type of depth we are not going to go into today or this week. But here's something William Blake said. Without, he's a, a Scottish uh, uh, poet, without neatness of execution, the sublime cannot exist. The perfection that exists in creation speaks so much about the Creator, about the Creator, okay? Uh, Celeste is going to touch on one of the little details about that in a few minutes. Okay, growth in our knowledge of Scripture produces growth in our knowledge of Christ. So going back to my first question, you know, time spent in God's Word. It's very important. And I mean time spent. Don't look at a verse and then jump to a commentary and close your eyes and have prayer finish. But read a chunk of scripture, at least a paragraph, and meditate, think about it. All right, let's move along. You've seen this before. One of the statements I have on my desk, your relationship with Christ will be no greater than your relationship with his word. Your relationship with Christ, who's not with us, physically, will be no greater than your relationship with His Word. It's very important. We become who we are through relationships, and we develop relationships through conversations. Okay, next, Gospel of John. Why specifically Gospel of John? Let's look at the four Gospels. Matthew, next. Now these three form a triangle. You know, they all look at the Lord Jesus from the same level. Same high level. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew presents him as king, sovereign. Mark presents him as a servant. Luke presents him as the man of man, perfect man. But when John comes into play, it's like a pyramid. John is right on top because he presents him as the flesh, yes. The Son of God, perfect man, perfect God as it were. We cannot fully understand that, we can never. And keep that in mind whenever you read the Gospels. Let me repeat. That Jesus Christ is perfect God and perfect man. 
Keep that in mind when you read the Gospels because when Jesus says something, there is the human divine component to it. And we can never understand because whenever the human and the divine meet, there will always be mystery, that which we cannot explain. But here's Jesus in having these conversations, five which I've selected. He's having a human one-on-one, -on -one, heart to heart conversation. Okay. What is fascinating is the Gospels touch no more than 50 to 52 days, 50 to 52 days of 31 years of Christ's life. Think about that. It's about over 50 to 52 days of Christ's 31. All right. The message of John in three words. Anyone remembers? With the starting with the letter J. For those of you who didn't attend, I provided three words for each of the 66 books of the Bible. Summarizing the message. Okay, John's Gospel. The Son of Man became a man. Son of God became a man to enable men to become sons of God. C.S. Lewis statement. Jesus is God, Yahweh. Okay, three words. Starting J for John. Jesus is Yahweh. Okay. Jesus, the perfect God-man, reveals both God and man to humankind in his words, his work, and his work. Jesus, the perfect God-man, reveals both God and man to humankind in his words, his work, and his work. Okay. Talking about his words, I've selected five conversations. Their relevance today. What, is, what, what, what does David mean by relevance? Okay, this is the gist of it. Using principles from five conversations of Jesus Christ to help us become more effective in our spoken and non-spoken interactions with people. In other words, whether it's at home, whether it's between husband and wife, parents with children, whether it's with a professional contact, whether it's in church with believers, or whether it's with a stranger in a different culture, we have some lessons. And those are all from the five conversations. Okay. The relevance today at home, at work, at church, at school, at play, at social events, in person. Okay. This is what we're doing in person. But a little earlier, I saw a journalist at the back on the phone. He was talking. And if someone from the New Testament looked at him and says, that is a madman. He's talking into something into his hand. He's mad. Take him away. Literally. Don't worry, brother. No one's going to do that. <laughs> but that's the point. We have a live conversation with someone else. But let me say one thing. I'll, I'll do this for the next, at a distance, right? We have conversations at a distance. And what do we use? <coughs> Understand. Can you imagine Paul trying to identify that? Okay. We use letters too. And those of you who don't know, Celeste and I got to know each other through letter writing. She sent me a thank you note in the month of March 1989. And I returned my thanks. And then our blossoming relationship developed through a letter writing. And it is incredible. Ask him how intimate our knowledge of each other became through the words we exchanged. Am I right, sir? <laughs> so here's the point, not just from our relationship, but the written word of God provides that vehicle to have intimacy with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is powerful. Intimacy with God through the Lord Jesus Christ through His Word. Then of course we have social media, all those icons there. Okay, here are the sessions I'm going to be breaking down. Jesus and His Mother. 
you have one sheet hand up, you know, just all blind. We will make some observations tomorrow. Then Jesus and Nicodemus. Remember that conversation? Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Jesus, Mary, and Martha. Who's missing? Yeah, you never spoke to God. Okay. Jesus and Peter. Jesus and his mother have some principles for us as communication in a family. Jesus and Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a professional. So was Jesus, a professional teacher. Jesus and the Samaritan woman, a total stranger, a different gender, and a different culture. Jesus, Mary, and Martha, intimate friends. Jesus and Peter, believers, and also in a sense professionals too. So this is, these are the categories we're going to look at. But for each, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start in front of the conversation. We're going to say, how did the conversation start? The persons in the conversation, identify the persons. Then the questions Jesus asked, all this is the outline in your handout. Needs that Jesus was trying to meet. Was Jesus Christ a good listener? We're going to look at the text. And you're going to help me uncover these details. And finally, conversation lessons for today. As you see in your handout for tomorrow and the other sessions, there's nothing further. Just a reference and one other appropriate word at the end, identifying the type of relationship. We are going to be observing the text together in a relaxed way, all right? And that's what we're going to be doing, all right? In each session, we will read scripture carefully. The importance is carefully, because there are some interesting details we sometimes miss. Let me give you a clue. They fill how many water pots? In John chapter two? Six. One word we often miss is, they fill the water pot to the fascinating, isn't it? Okay, we'll talk about that tomorrow. And you can participate in this discussion just how you're doing it now. You know, I think we're getting relaxed and you're getting you get used to me and my silly ways. Participate in this discussion because that's where we develop our love for what others know about scripture that inform us. And one of the things I enjoy when I listen and watch some of the students who give me feedback when I teach a course is how much I learn from all of them. And I think Celeste will agree to in her area when she teaches. It is amazing how much we can learn from each other. And finally, we're going to apply truths for today. You've seen this flower, right? This is a picture I took of, uh, of a tiger lily in our yard. But a conversation is like a flower. Three slides and Celeste got that. To see its beauty, the petals must be open. Yeah, thanks. I know your eyes are open. Have we had gone to swim? Oh, thank you. And here's the point. We will never know where a conversation will take us if we do not start one. To smell its fragrance, we must reach its level. There's a rose out there. No matter how deeply you inhale, you never smell it. Does anyone have that ability? Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, you, most of you heard the city of Chandigarh in North India. I worked there for a couple of years. Uh, there was a place uh, called the uh, Injor, is it? Yeah, Rose Garden. I was so fascinated with the green rose. I went so close to it, and literally, a bee went up my nostril. <laughs> so, you know what I'm happening, you know, you have to be so careful, you cannot be too, too intimate with the rose, because you can also get stung by a bee, and pricked by a thorn. Alright, to smell its fragrance, you must reach its level. We will never understand the unique qualities of a person without a conversation at a common level. 
That's why as an adult, if you talk to a child, you cannot stand to talk to the child. Where do you do? Get down to that child, physically and in all other ways as well. Third slide. To appreciate the details, you must take time to observe. Especially today, we don't have time. The world around us doesn't wait. But we have to stop and make time to observe details that says, wow, what a God of creation. We will never sense the value of a person without spending time in conversation with that person. Conversation is the mouth. Celestia is an associate professor in the Department of Fairy Gardens at the Vedic College of Dentistry. And she's a, uh, of course, you know, uh, she is my wife for sure. But the, the words that I hear and some of the things that uh, I hear from her colleagues and others tell me that she is a very able clinical teacher and an enduring one who loves her area of specialty and loves teaching her students. And so to me, it's a great joy to, to share that with Celeste and to share our lives together because we, we keep each other literally on our toes in the field of education and the field of affairs. And so, over to my dear wife.